So now I'm going to I'm going to play a little game with you guys with Mike and Sky. I'm going to play a little game where we're going to go over some highlights of Donald Trump's speech that he just gave to the National Religious Broadcasters and we're going to decide is he saying something conservative or is he saying something nationalist? Okay. Can blasphemous be an option? Can blasphemous yeah, be an option? Yeah, you can apply that to all of the above. But if you just say that every time, I'm going to turn off your buzzer and you won't be able to buzz in anymore because you're not really <laughs> participating in the game. Okay. <laughs> Trump, uh, all right. I'm in, in for the game. Yeah. So National Religious Broadcasters is the big convention. It's, it's It used to travel around the country and now it pretty much just sits in Nashville like all the other Christians with radio shows. Um, and it's at the, the Opryland hotel. If you've ever been there, it's, you know, it's uh, Disney world for Republicans. So in a packed hotel ballroom in Nashville, the former president pledged to bring God back into the public square and restore a country that's fallen apart since he left the white house. He promises a revival of Christian power. Mm, mm. Interesting. Uh, nationalism. <laughs> Ding, ding, is that ding. How we, is, is that how we play yeah, that's this? How we, that's how we play. President, Former okay. President Donald Trump promised Thursday, February 22nd, that he would make a triumphant return to the White House next year and that he would restore Christian preachers to power in American oh. culture. Oh, here's nationalism. His, here's his... <laughs> Here's this quote. You didn't buzz in. You got to which oh, fallen pre- which fallen preachers is he going to restore? Is my question. If I get in, this is a quote. If I get in, <laughs> if I get in, you're going to be using that power at a level that you've never used before. You're oh, going to be blasphemy, using that power. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like that's line from Palpatine. I mean, that's straight He's, from. Yeah, yeah. It, it's He's hard. killing it. It's a challenge because so much of what he says doesn't actually make sense that it's hard to understand it enough to say, is, is there an ideology represented in this statement? So, mm. so Christian, it's an 80 something. Christian preachers are going to be using power at a level they've mm-hmm. never used power before if yeah. Trump is in the White House. Yeah. I'm not as a Christian sure preacher. I can't means. wait. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Have mm-hmm. power like you've never had it before. Totally. Uh, Did it, yeah. Didn't Trump Satan pro- say something similar to Jesus? I don't know. The I mean, there's a there's a like faint that, echo here. I don't know. Yeah, that, that does thought sound occurred familiar. to me reading this <laughs> that Trump at NRB was a little similar to Satan in the wilderness. Read. Can you read a couple of the applause lines though? Because. The idea yeah. that religious broadcasters are a, like not just hearing this and weighing it out, but, you know, at least some of them are publicly f- affirming mm-hmm. that this is good, that uh, oh, what's yeah. being said. It, it was very well received. Trump portrayed evangelical Christians as a persecuted group under President Joe Biden's administration. He told the religious broadcasters that one of his first acts of a second Trump term would be to set up a task force to root out, quote, anti-Christian bias. Okay. Oh, okay. dictatorship. The federal, the federal government. That's not what I want to hear. That's so good. Mike. Oh, sorry. The federal government setting up a task force to root out anti Christian bias. Conservatism? Nationalism. Mm. Mm. Conservatism. I'm going to say nationalism. Okay. Okay. Anti Christian bias. Would, yes. He said he would also come to the aid of political prisoners. That's good. We don't like political prisoners. Referring to those imprisoned for their actions at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Oh, he's not talking about Putin's political prisoners, including American journalists. No, he's talking about the people that <laughs> wow. injured right, right. 150 oh. police officers on January mm-hmm. 6th and broke into a federal facility, smashing through the windows, those people. Some of those convicts mm-hmm. were heard at the beginning of his speech in a recorded rendition of the Star Spangled Banner by the so-called mm. J6 Prison Choir. He's done this a couple yeah. of times before he speaks at an event. They, they, some of the prisoners that were arrested for breaking into the Capitol ha- have recorded over a phone line themselves singing the Star Spangled Banner, and Trump is playing that to introduce himself. Yeah. It's the Rousing J6 is the word I've prison. heard used to describe it. Rousing. Trump appealed to the religious audience with Bible verses 
that always works. I've, mm-hmm. I, I do that myself. Um, yeah. And promises of world peace. The Bible says, blessed yeah. are the peacemakers. I will be a peacemaker and I will be the only yeah. president so who can say. So let's round up all the anti-Christians. Good. And Good. I, he, he says, I will prevent World War III. Mm-hmm. So he's a peacemaker. So that Jesus mm-hmm. likes that. Um, though he admitted yeah. he wasn't a very good Christian and he didn't know much about the Bible, Trump told broadcasters that he shared their faith other than not knowing much about their faith and would always stand up for God. Lines that brought thunderous applause. Mm. Thund- standing up. That's good because okay, God up needs for God. standing up for. I know. On it. Yeah. What, what would he do without Trump? Um, I know we've been goofy, up. goofy and laughing mm-hmm. about this and, and, I'm I'm actually a, really angry. Playing I was a game so with that. so ridiculously offended by this. Yeah, I I'm disturbed. I'm just uh, uh-huh. I'm, it's not I'm good. I'm shocked that I'm still shocked. I keep wondering there's got to be a bottom. So won't and again, this isn't about this isn't about whether or not you vote for Trump. Vote for whoever you want to, but to present this vision as the Christian vision or a Christian vision. I mean, the only word for that is blasphemous or antichrist. I mean, that that the mm-hmm. the use of power in this way stands against every single aspect of Jesus's teaching and example in the Gospels, and so to allow yeah, but, religious yeah, broadcasters. Yeah, to, I love this voice. Jesus, I love when you do this. Jesus had yeah. to lose so that we could mm. be winners. Yeah, so he could so much set winning. us up for. Winning. Okay, here's here's how he closed closed it out. He also claimed, and this is where it gets really. I don't know. I don't know if maybe you liked the other parts, but you're not going to like this part, Mike. <laughs> Trump I'm claimed sorry, that he man. was being indicted. I am being indicted for standing up on behalf of Christians and conservatives. "Quote: I hmm. am being indicted for you, yeah. for your sins. I am being those hush money payments. Absolutely. I, I cl- it is kind of brilliant though that. Trump is appealing to essentially a substitutionary atonement yeah. language totally. here. Does he, know? I am, Does he know he's doing this? I don't know. It works, obviously, in uh-huh. communication, but but it, it, there, he's tapping into something deeply ingrained, especially in the evangelical theological mm-hmm. culture. And yeah. I mean, I've heard, we have we saw an article somewhere, or there was an interview of a woman who, say, who even said it feels a lot like Jesus, that he's stepping mm-hmm. in the way and taking the hit from for the federal us. government yeah. for us. Okay. Right. It's, it's right. just so, fascinating. Uh,